Hello everybody, God bless each and every one of you. I'm in the car, once again, it's raining, not going to be able to work today, but I got a lot of errands to do. It is Thursday, the 6th day of August, 2020. I don't know why I wanted to say 2006, why that was stuck in my mind. Maybe i am uh, got a little bit of Joe Biden in me and my brain just ain't functioning. I don't know, well, it is what it is. I want to tell you a little story today. I'm going to do something not really different, but something... I'm going to tell you a, a biblical story, and I'm going to try to put it into today's, today's terms. In other words, I'm going to tell you a story from the Bible, but I'm going to update it. I'm not going to change anything, because that's, you know, a major no-no. The Lord tells us not to change them, but the story, I'm just going to update it to, you know... Uh, to our times as best as I can with, and still stay true to the story. I want to tell the story about the prodigal son. And if you've never heard this, it really is a, it is a wonderful story about love, about mostly forgiveness, and at the very end, I'm going to tie it together and tell you, you know, basically the meaning or what you're supposed to to get out of it. So, I'm gonna gonna tell you the story about the prodigal son. The prodigal son, there was a man who was rather wealthy. He had servants. So even in today's times, you know, uh, butler, maids, people to make his food, clean his house, take care of his clothing, you know, wealthy. He had two sons, an elder son and a younger son. And they were rich. The, the, the father was wealthy, as I said. And the younger son kind of got antsy, I guess is the way you want to put it. He wanted to go out and see what was beyond the fields. He wanted to go out and experience the world. He wanted to see what the world had to offer. So he asked his father that he wanted his inheritance now instead of down the road usually you get your inheritance when the parent passes away but he wanted it now that's so much like today in our younger generation they want everything now and they want it their way they don't want to work for it they want it handed to them and that is the prodigal son that's what we're seeing today and that's the prodigal son so the father loving the son like he did and does well did in the story the elder brother was absolutely irate did not think it was a good idea but the father loved his youngest child he loved him so he gave in like so many parents today do when they're young and I'm not talking children like five six years old I'm talking you know, teenage, late teens, early uh, 20s that are still living at home, they, they throw a fit because they don't get whatever it is they want. And their parents give in. Well, this father did this. He gave in to his son. And he gave his son his inheritance. Well, his son got that money and, oh, out the door he went. He went to the next city over and he just had an absolutely what we used to call a hootin' nanny time. He, he just ripped it up. He partied. He drank. He, he, he had uh, women. He got prostitutes. and You know, he just absolutely partied it up. If it would be today, he probably would have done drugs, bought expensive stuff that he didn't need, cars, jewelry, like young people usually do when they come upon a large amount of money. They don't think about tomorrow. They only think about today. And that ties me into something that the youth today basically live their life by, which is actually a satanic thing called YOLO. And I've done a video on this, which stands for you only live once, so do whatever you want. That's the devil. That's the devil fooling them. Anyways, let's get back to the prodigal son. So he goes and he just rips, snorts, and tears. Burns right through his inheritance. I mean, burns right through it. Finds himself destitute. 
finds himself with nothing, finds himself actually yearning for the pig slop because he's hungry. He's got no food. He's probably emaciated by this time. He's probably thin. He's probably gaunt. He sees pigs eating. What do they eat? Slop. And he starts desiring the pig slop. And this is when he thinks, man, how far have I fallen? Here I am. I left all that goodness to come out into this wickedness, blew all my money, and here I am desiring pig slop, pig food, whatever you want to call it, pig feed, hog feed, we call it pig slop. So he decides he's going to go back home and become a servant for his father so at least he knows his father takes wonderful care of the servants. He clothes them in very nice clothes. He feeds them very nice food. They have a wonderful roof over their heads. So he decides I'm going to no matter how hard it is I'm going to put my head in shame and I'm going to head back and I'm going to ask my father for a job. And that is exactly what he does. His father is out in the field, and lo and behold, he looks up, he sees this gaunt, emaciated thing coming towards him, and the closer he gets, he realizes it's his son. And he's filled with so much joy and so much happiness. Why? Well, his son's coming home. His son that he loves is coming home. He says he wants to work for his father. He wants to just earn so he can have a roof over his head and, and have food. And his father says, nonsense. You're my son. I love you. He goes and gets the servant to, to fetch one of the finest uh, robes that they have. And he wraps him around in it and he hugs him and tells him how much he loves him and the son just is doesn't know what to say doesn't know what what you know here he left took his inheritance blew it stupidly and come back with his head in his hands and his father welcome welcomes him with open and loving arms my friends, that is the prodigal son. It's a little more to it than that, but I only have a f several minutes to do a video, so I try to condense it as best as I can, and I think I did a pretty decent job. Uh, you can read the whole the whole story in the Bible, but um, the father in that story, my friends, is Jesus. He's waiting for each and every one of you to come home. He's waiting with loving arms to embrace you, to forgive you of everything you've done wrong, all your sins, all your your wickedness, your your just whatever. Whatever. He's willing to wipe your slate clean. He paid the fine for you on that cross. If you were standing in front of a judge, he would have paid the fine and you would have been free. But you have to accept Jesus. There's the thing. You have to accept and, and ask for forgiveness. And the thing is, it's not a difficult thing to do. It's not hard by no means. Matter of fact, it's probably one of the easiest things that you will do. And one of the most, or not one of, the most rewarding thing. Because you will get to spend eternity in heaven with your Father and His lovingness, warmth in heaven. That is what we all should be yearning for, is to spend eternity with our Father, our Savior, the one that went to that cross. He loved you, me, He loved us so much. That he went through that horrific pain and agony. It's true. 
he loved us so much. And just like the prodigal son coming home ashamed, dejected, the father didn't want none of that. He was so happy that his son, his lost sheep, came back. And my friends, each and every one of the people out in this world that don't know Christ as their personal Savior, they're the lost sheep. That's why that is used in the Bible. They're the lost sheep, and Jesus just wants you to come home. He just wants to gather up his sheep. He wants to gather them up. He doesn't want anybody lost. He does not want anyone lost lost although we know there's going to be plenty that will not accept that love that will not accept that invitation that will not come into those open arms they will turn their back and run away we know this because Christ tells us more will go the path of destruction it'll be wide and broad so we know more will go don't be one of them don't stay a lost sheep roaming about in this wicked world. In this, just what we have today is just, it's absolutely horrific. You don't have to go through this alone. The Father's right there. He's right there. All you got to do is ask Him into your heart. Ask Him to forgive you for your sins. And my friends, not only will He forgive you, It'll be the best decision you've ever made in your life. I can guarantee it. There's not hardly any guarantees in life, if any. But that one is a guarantee. Because it's right in the Word of God. That's all I got for you today. I hope you like that. I wanted to do something, you know, like I said, a little different. Um, I tried to stay as close as I could to the story. So, uh, But you can go read it for yourself. It's called The Prodigal Son. You can just probably type it on the internet. Uh, I, I would recommend the King James Version, but, you know, as long as you're reading the Bible, you know, I just prefer the King James Version. Uh, just type it in and have a read. I think, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful story. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You guys know the whole deal. Have a wonderful Thursday. Be safe out there. Be careful. And if you're one of those lost sheep, it's time to come home. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.